I wanted to take a moment to talk about uh, two things that are commonly and critically unfortunately left out of stone commentaries or reviews. And the first one is that the type of steel that they're being used to grind and secondly uh, the pressure that's actually being used on the stone. Now the unfortunate thing is without that two bits of information it's very hard to interpret a lot of what people say because the performance of the stone is critically dependent on these two things. I've been doing some measurements recently on stones and I've been using two points. One is the lower critical point and the other one is the, the upper critical point. The lower critical point is the pressure that you have to apply to just get the stone to release abrasive. If you grind with less pressure, the stone won't release abrasive, it just wears, goes smooth and stops cutting. At the upper critical point, you're putting that much pressure that the stone is essentially releasing abrasive before it's significantly worn. Now, I've done some measurements on this stone, and they're down in the description of the numbers. The interesting thing is, those pressure points are significantly influenced by the steel type. Now, if that doesn't make obvious sense to you, just think about grinding this. This is a very low carbide steel, and it's relatively soft. So when the abrasive, my hand is the abrasive, meets the steel, it bites in very deep. Steel wraps around it. Now when you move the knife, it's very easy for the steel to tear off that piece of abrasive. On the other hand, this is a knife in 10V, significantly harder, almost 10 rock gold points harder than the other knife. So this time, when this great big chunk of abrasive meets the steel, maybe only a little tiny bit of it sinks into the steel. So when the knife moves around, it's not going to tear out this big piece of abrasive, it's just going to cut a little groove into the steel. So you need more force to drive this big abrasive into the harder to cut steel. More force means more pressure. Now, yeah, you might think on, well, you know, I'm not the type to be into measuring forces and calculating areas and doing all that bad stuff. Cool. It's your time, your hobby, your reviews. Write and say whatever you want. As long as it's a fun way to you, you'll enjoy it, and we'll all get some information out of it. However, I don't think it's too much trouble to just estimate the force and just talk about the types of areas. So, for example, if you say, you know, I apply a high force, you can just estimate it a few pounds or whatever, and you're sharpening mainly just edge bevels, like on this. Well, if you're applying uh, sharpening on edge bevels, the area is very low, and if you're, you know, really leaning into it, I know you're using a few pounds of force, so that means your pressures are going to be very high. On the other hand, if you say, you know, you actually stand up and bear down and lean into it, well, that's way more than a few pounds of force. Again, I can get a lot more information out of it. On the other hand, if you say that you work on Japanese knives that have these huge, great big, ridiculously wide bevels, well, I know the area is huge, so the pressure is going to be much lower. And you actually grind very light. Uh, Japanese style sharpening tends to use a massive amount of very light passes. So in that case, you're not using a lot of force, areas are massive, and you're grinding on very easy to grind Japanese steels, I have a lot more information. So if you talk about the stone being easy to release abrasive or very hard to release abrasive, and again, if you don't want to, if you want to measure, great. Do some force measurements, do some area calculations. And if you want to do it but don't know how to work the numbers, just send me an email. Uh, it's no big deal. But if you don't want to do it, again, that's not what you enjoy. Just estimate it coarsely. I mean, you can tell, just press down on something. You're pressing down like a half a pound or five pounds. That's relatively easy to understand. Even that level of coarse estimation, and even a very coarse estimation of area, saying, that, you know, well, I'm trying to grind down the actual full blade grind of a knife versus working on the edge bevel of a knife. And one last thing. When you get a stone that you're finding that's releasing abrasive too much and the stone is wearing too fast, Try to use it on a knife which has a very hard to grind steel or on a very wide bevel and you might find that stone does much better. If you have a stone which doesn't release abrasive very well at all and the stone is just wearing smooth and it's annoying to use, try to use it 
and an easy to grind knife with a very narrow bevel and that stone might work better for you then. Just a couple of hints there and some information on how we can all get uh, some better use out of stone reviews and commentaries. As an aside, um, I've got some information wrote up on this stone already. Um, Shapton Pro 220, as with all Shapton Pros, comes very well packaged in the case with the little cartoon that tells you all the things that you do to make the stone cry. This is made from um, magnesium cement which is a coal setting cement just like Portland cement which what regular concrete is made out of. Unlike vitrified bond stone and resin bond stone which actually had to be baked and cured, magnesium cement uh, doesn't. It will just set at room temperature. But it's exceptionally fragile. Almost everything damages magnesium cement. Um, if you put this in water for an extended period of time, you will dissolve the actual cement, it will break down. Uh, if you let it dry out too fast, expose it to the sun, it can crack. If uh, wind or air moves over a lot and dries it out too fast, it can crack. Detergents will make it crack. Chemicals will make it crack. Again, very fragile stone. Unlike the vitrified and resinoid bond stones, which are essentially immune. I mean, you can take a vitrified bond stone, shove it down in water, put it in a freezer, and nothing happens to it because they're essentially glass based bonds. Uh, comes with this, you know, hard clamshell packaging, as all the Shepton Pros do. Very nice stone, as long as you understand the pressure uh, that's actually work to make it release uh, abrasive and work within them. The only complaint that I would say is these are radically thin for the price. Just understand what you're getting. Uh, for example, the Suhiro Chemical Stone is significantly less than this uh, of similar grit and is much, much thicker. And it comes out that this is like five times the cost of a Suhiro Chemical Stone. Interesting argument to make. But a lot of people love uh, Shapton Pros. And I'm actually really liking this because the pressures that's actually required to make that release abrasive is very nice for most of the steels that I have for working uh, edge bevels in particular. And again, down in the description and other links, I have a lot more uh, information, a lot of number crunching and stuff for people who want uh, a bit more precision.